Welcome to the Anime and Simulcast Discussion Podcast, Divergence Casts. Cast. I am one of your hosts, the Moe Time Traveler, known as JJ, or the Journeyman66. I'm joined by my fellow host, the cheeky and mysterious Esper, Alex. Yo. And the bookish and quiet alien stranger. What's up, bro? And today we shall praise Haruhi. But first, we shall talk about our weeks, and then anime. So, uh, how about you, Stranger? What have you been doing this week? Well, let's see. I watched uh, three hour movies, which was Perfect Blue, the Anohana movie, and Grave of the Fireflies. Oh, nice. And then, and then I also marathoned all of Dead Man Wonderland at once. Nice. And other than that, I haven't really been doing much. How about you, Alex? I've actually been doing plenty of, uh, well... One, I've been getting back into listening. Like, I have like a giant list of music, like artists to listen to, and uh, I recently started getting back to it. And I actually started listening to Mastodon, is one of the groups, as well as um, this one Japanese band named uh, Ling Tosite Sigure. They did the opening for Psychopaths, the first one. Mm-hmm. So I've been doing that. I um, actually worked on a blog for a while, which is up. It's a Kingdom Hearts blog that I worked on. Mm-hmm. And uh, got back to back, nice. and uh, started Final Fantasy X as well as uh, Dragon's Crown today, mm. and pretty much been marathoning System <laughs> Shock too. Yeah. Oh, Alex, you just reminded me that I also start listening to Hatsune Miku. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, see, that's some good stuff. Like. I always sort of found it weird at first. Like, I can admit, like, the songs are catchy, but I sort of was a little confused that people could obsess over, like, Hatsune Miku or, like, the various other Vocaloid stuff. But my sister actually got the game, and that, uh, Project Diva F actually has some, like, really catchy songs. One of them is, uh, I think my favorite is, uh, about that one, uh, the one, uh, Vocaloid named, um, Luca. And it's called Glasses. It's probably my favorite one. Uh, anything else? Uh, uh, not really, yeah. not that I can think of. Well, oh, actually, uh, actually, actually, uh, actually, I also got back to reading the uh, Stormlight Archive. Okay. Mm. Uh, me, I've been, well, playing more Warframe and stuff. Uh, I played a little of Planet Side 2, which uh, I like alright, but uh, I kind of suck at it. <laughs> Uh, I, f- I finally finished the Setokai Yaikun Domo Season 1 OVAs at last. <sighs> and worked more on my uh, Steinsgate review. And, well, that's about, about it for me. How long is that now? Uh, it's getting close to 2,000 words, and uh, I haven't even gotten halfway through the character section. Yeah. It's going to be a long review. Yep. This is going to be a beast. Yeah. Uh, really need to finish it soon, though. Uh, we start classes again next week. So, uh, going to have very little time to work on it. Uh, well, with our weeks out of the way, let's get into simulcasts. So, uh, first up, have either of you watched the Layers Terror in Resonance? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, not only is she aiding terrorism, she's also a terrible cook. Oh my goodness, does this look hideous? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this show is just like getting better and better with each week. Yeah, it is. It's just getting so good. And uh, like the stuff, um, well, uh, some, some spoilers for the, the latest episode, but... Uh, how they introduced uh, five at the end, that that was just fantastically done. Yeah, it was pretty. Uh, I'm trying to think of the word. I thought of it before we started recording that I completely forgot. I guess it had me on edge. Yeah. I say. Intense. Uh... Yeah, pretty much. It was pretty intense. Like I said, I had, I thought it was, I had had me on edge to see yeah. what exactly was going to go on because you had the you know main detective. It's like trying to figure out like what the you know what's going on, and once the whole like you know um, the interference on the phones comes, the uh, yeah. nine and uh, twelve start realizing something's going on. 
Yeah. And so from there on, it just got like you sort of like knew that she had that you know that lady had to be in like involved somehow. Yeah. But I like how that they, regardless of being being able to figure out that she was involved, it was still like you know pretty intense, pretty had like mm-hmm. had you on the edge of your seat. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, what I've been saying is it's like, so far it seems like it's going to be the Breaking Bad of anime. Yeah. I mean, you got, like, the main criminals that you're following, and just, like, this giant epic game where they're messing with law enforcement, and now Five's coming, so it's just getting, like, more and more intricate as it goes along. Yeah. It's a really fun watch. Yeah, and like we said, like uh, Alex said, it's just getting better and better each week. Yeah. One thing, yeah. One thing I sort of noticed is, did they use an Australian voice actor for the uh, American guy? I, I don't. It, that's sort of the thing. I, one thing I've noticed before with the, uh, like it could have been because it did sort of sound like that. But one thing I've noticed before with Japanese voice actors trying to speak English is that they'll, you know, it's never going to completely sound like you know what they intend it mm-hmm. to be, because that that's sort of actually a good example of Beck. There's this one character in one of the earlier episodes where he was pretty much like uh, pretty much just a side character, not really a side character, but unimportant in general. Yeah. He's it didn't really sound, you know, like Ameri- the, the American like, you know, version of like our version of English or whatever. Mm-hmm. It sounded somewhat Australian. I've also seen like various YouTube clips where it just sounds off. So I think it might have been somebody it might have been a Japanese person doing the yeah. American voice work. I mean, either way, it was still decently good. It just didn't yeah, sound like, yeah, you know, an American it agent. Was, it's like, it I'm an Australian. Good. I'm an Australian just happens to be in the FBI or something it, like that. Yeah. I mean, it, it could make sense, and uh, it it didn't really sound Englishy at all to me, but then again, yeah. I didn't hear, really hear that much of it, so I couldn't really tell. Nah, that's just uh, what I heard it as, because I'm, I'm pretty much just speaking from, like, past experience. Like with shows and just various clips of things I've watched. Uh-huh. Okay. Like I said, uh, either way, it was, it was pretty good or better yeah. than what you'll normally hear. Yeah. Yeah, it was pretty good. Uh, okay. Um, have you watched the latest Tokyo Ghoul Stranger? Yep. Okay. Uh, what were your thoughts on the episode? It felt that had a lot of feeling, but to me, or sorry, uh, you go on. Well, like, um, now that they're done with that whole plot line with the um, gourmet, like, I'm really liking the new one involving, like, the mother and her child. Like, I can't remember their names. Yeah. But, like, it looks like he's going to be getting into some pretty emotional stuff with them. Yeah. Yeah. It, you know, and you know, yeah. like, I'm all about the drama in anime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I like it, but there's still no people eating for me. I mean, I think they had a lot of uh, great development for Toka at the beginning and stuff, uh, but still nothing to really give. Still nothing to, to get. Blah. Still nothing to get me to care about the main character at all in it. It's like if uh, if it doesn't really do anything that really. Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? gets me to like it more than I do now, I may just give it to, give my uh, second place piece of anime of the season to uh, Nozaki-kun, simply because it's not really doing that much right now. Uh, okay. Yeah, it seems like the main character so far, he's just being kind of like the... I can't want to put that. Just kind of like the generic... Every man being shoved into the ghoul world, and he's witnessing all the stuff, but yeah. nothing's actually happening to him. I mean, at the start, I was kind of okay with his character, because, well, he basically just found out he was becoming a monster. Ah. It's called trouble. Okay, there we are. Sorry about that call trouble. Uh, what were you saying? Me or Alex? I don't know. I think it was... You guys were talking about Tokyo Ghoul. 
Yeah. Are you saying something very cut out? Uh, what was I talking about? Something about how you could forgive in the beginning or something? Oh, yeah. I could forgive it in the beginning because, uh, he, well, he was basically finding out that he was becoming a monster, so his shock and, uh, reactions were understandable, but now we're, like, in seven, or however many episodes we're in right now, and he hasn't become any interesting at all. Yeah, it seems like the side characters around him are much more interesting, like, yeah. Michio's relationship with that one girl, that was really good. Yeah, really good writing for her in this series. But yeah, just the characters that surround her are much more interesting than the main character. Yeah, which is depressing because this, this series seriously had one of the best episodes of the uh, season. It's just not really living up to it that much. Yeah. <sighs> Uh, have you watched the, uh, latest Akame Got Kill? Nope. That's one of the two I still haven't gone back to. Okay, I probably won't talk too much about it, because there's some, uh, major spoilers in it. I, I will say, I, hmm, I kind of, this series is kind of a mess. I still enjoy it, but it tries to say it's, like, really, it tries to call itself, like, really gray and stuff, and then basically justifies everything the characters do in, like, a really black and white uh, kind of morality to it. So, uh, it's just kind of a mess. Well, on that subject... Well, I guess we'll just head off to another Kikun then, since we have uh, have either of you watched the latest Noza Kikun? Oh yeah. my goodness, yeah, yeah. I love Noza Kikun so much right now. I like it more than Zenkyo No Terror. It's like my anime of the season. Yeah, I I still like uh, Terran Resonance more, but yeah, Noza Kikun is easily very great this season. Yeah, I like. I won't say like it's really good, but I say I still think uh, Terran Resonance will be my number one season, uh, one yeah. number one uh, show of the season. And I'll actually be the first to say I sort of thought this week's Nozaki was like a little weak. It could have been just because I didn't really feel at, at the time I didn't feel like watching it, yeah. and I watched it anyway. And pause recording. All right, where were we? What were we talking about? Oh, yeah. No, something no, it's good. I actually, while I still enjoyed the episode, I actually thought it would probably been the weakest episode since the first episode. And I, I think it has more to do with that. I wasn't in the mood to watch the show. Yeah. But regardless, the first half was pretty funny because the guy was um, yeah. completely clueless as to who the uh, uh, Lorelei will say, because that's who he thinks she is. is uh, but I just sort of thought eventually towards the end, the... Um, gag started running out of steam a little bit well i actually really love this episode a lot and especially the second half when they're like writing into uh the character based off of Theo, what she would say Mm -hmm. and it just all i love all that part when they were imagining what characters was i thought that was funny but that's actually where my big issue i that's that's where my big issue with the second but the six episode lies. I didn't really find the second half of the episode funny at all. Like fun that funny. Mm. So Yeah. Like I said, I was in a weird mood. I had watched Barakamon and Sabagabu. Mm. And I was trying to decide like maybe should I hold off on watching Nozaki? But well, I was like I, I figured might as well just watch it. I had the time. And then I just watched it. Yeah. Still good, I just yeah. Didn't think compared to the last few episodes, it was like as good. Yeah. Well, I still love the series a lot. So it's just fantastic. But I I can be forgiven for a couple of slow episodes since uh, yeah. it's really good. And uh, that's the thing. Like nobody expected. Like what? Who? There's like was this? 
I'm not sure I, about you, but I, this what the show wasn't even on my radar. Yeah, I, I even, it wasn't. I, I, even, I, I can't even remember if I read about it that much either. So for me, it just came out of nowhere. Yeah, I I think I just saw some images someone was posting or something, and I got curious. Either that, or I just saw it up and decided to give it a chance. But then I watched it, and I just loved it so much, and uh, just loved this series so much. Uh, anything else you want to talk about it? Uh, yeah, um, like as far as I'm concerned with the new episode, by the way, I agree with um, EJJ on how well done this episode was. Like that second half especially. The thing that was, like, like I found really funny about it was how um, Chiyo and that other dude was just completely clueless when they found out that it was screen tones. <laughs> and they got all super defensive about it. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. Like I got, I absolutely love like every aspect of the show. Just the characters, the humor, the yeah. art. It's just all coming together to make it like one of my favorite shows I've ever seen. Yeah. Like it's um, yeah. so far it's my favorite comedy anime already, and this top in and said kind of no itch, no itches on. Yeah. That's saying something. You like that show? Like I, I'll probably wait till it's actually finished to render like complete verdict, but I I will agree with you, stranger. That's, that's what I'm addressing. Um, that a lot there's like so much to like in the show. It has like you said, good art style. Um, it's opening and closing is pretty good. Yeah, and it's legitimately like just you know you will laugh hard if you watch the show. It probably yeah. is it's still like even with me sort of thinking it was the weaker like. Episode six being the weakest episode since the first one. I still it's still the most solid. I think the most solid comedy of this season. Yeah. Oh yeah, I heard someone describe the opening as Japanese Dave Matthews. <laughs> hey, that actually, no, that's actually, it's actually, it's actually my favorite. That's actually my favorite opening this season. It's like so. Yeah. Groovy. Now, just also, it's one of the first times where I actually pay attention to the design of an opening. Yeah. Like, you know how it's animated and everything. I like the panels. And all that, yeah. And how they did it, and every, how they do it. But yeah, oh. like I know, like I didn't think the show would be as good as it's become in the first episode. Like the first episode was a pleasant surprise, but I was like, this has the chance of either being something great or something irritating. And I, I'm glad, I'm happy to say it's become something great. So yeah. Far. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to talk about about uh, another Kikun, or should we move on? I can move on now. Alright, uh, I assume you watched the uh, latest Barakamon, Alex? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I love that. I would say, I'd actually say, it's I'm, not sure if I'd, I'm not sure if I'd say in terms of humor was the best episode, it was, you know, I, yeah. I found it quite funny, but it was overall, I think, probably the most solid episode so far, because yeah. it had a fair bit of, like, growth, I guess you could say, Yeah. for uh, Honda. Yeah. With, you know, him saying, you know, I want to stay on the island and all that for now. But uh, I loved the beginning of the episode. Yeah, the part with, uh, the, with uh, tattoo. Naru, yeah, the tattoo and uh, Naru yeah. being, like, amazed by the credit card. <laughs> yeah, I got a crack out of that because it's just, like, you know, strikes. It's it's like you said last uh, in the first episode that the show has really, like, nailed the kids. Yeah. And, it, and, you know, Naru is just some of the stuff she does, like, her like, tr- her having the tattoo on her arm, and it's the, her reaction to the credit card, and her like, and then the guy pretty much like panicking because he didn't want his credit card to be stolen, and everybody misinterpreted him grabbing her as like attempted kidnapping. Yeah. And he wound up get then they you know they take him to the what was it the uh, count town the yeah, town meeting count. town council or whatever, and he just winds up getting drunk off his ass instead. <laughs> Yeah. Like you're on, you're under the assumption that Honda's gonna have to like you know go there, explain that there's been a big misunderstanding, and the, the guy, um, the new ca- the new character introduced, is just bringing him to Honda's house instead. Yeah. Because everyone just found him getting drunk. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, anything else to talk about? I mean, what did you think of the episode? I. Really, I enjoyed it. Yeah, and like you said, it had a lot of good character development for Honda. 
and stuff. And uh, uh, so many wonderful moments with, like, Naru and uh, Hina. It's like, mm. don't console me with silence. I want that part. <laughs> <laughs> And the, uh, the, all that stuff with the paper airplanes, that was pretty damn pleasant. Yeah, what, what did you think of the uh, epilogue? Uh, let's see, which one, one? What happened in the epilogue again? I kind of forgot. Uh, the one manga girl. The one, the oh, one yeah. Writer, walked uh, in on them after the bug bomb. <laughs> and yes. they're all screaming, like, oh, let's get her back in. And then the one guy, the new guy, is like, I'm going back to Tokyo. Then when um, Honda's friend was also drunk again, she pretty much mis- again misinterpreted it yeah. as like some yaoi thing. Yeah. And she's like, one just like bashing her head on the gate to Honda's place. I just, I was cracking up. Yeah. She's, I think probably, she's not in it much, but she's probably one of the best yeah. like supporting characters in that show, just because the way she just has interpreted everything since what episode four, I think it is. Yeah. It's like. He's trying not to be a Fujiyoshi. Yeah, that's... Uh, uh, now, when the, the one thing she said at the end also got me to crack up. She's like, they're, it's, like it's, a full, it's a full-scale invasion. <laughs> or like they're like invading now. Yeah. now that I was just dying at that part. Yeah. It's, it's, Barakamon is also really wonderful comedy this season. It's like it's just so wonderful and has a lot of heart and everything. Yeah. yeah, and like I said last episode, really great kid characters and well characters all around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to talk about, uh, Barakamon? Uh, not that I can think of now. All right. Well, uh, uh, actually, uh, have you started watching the Majigamon shorts yet? Uh, not yet. I need to get to around to that sometime. This yeah, you should because uh, they're actually quite funny. The one thing I like about them, like I'm not sure how many other anime have done this, or like. I guess manga too, since they'll release like yeah. chibi chapters at some point. Yeah. But one of the things I like is that in the first few episodes of the shorts, they would have the characters come on and pretty much like fall over and like comment like, "Why is my head so heavy?" and all that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like I showed you, there's the recent one. Yeah, the uh, Naruto. Yeah, 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 you'll see it, the context of what it is, but I got a <laughs> crack out of it. She just turns into a walrus. <laughs> I think that's the perfect animal for her. One thing, one thing I'll give to the credit: uh, they actually got a little girl, like a younger, a younger, uh, younger girl, to play her, mm. and she has done a fantastic job. Yeah, in my Just, opinion. Uh, and I'm wondering, yeah. say, you know, that being that this li- that was licensed by Funimation, I'm wondering that's gonna get get a dub eventually. Do you think they're just gonna try to do the same in the English dub, or mm. like possible English dub, or do you think? They would just get somebody who could sound young. I, that's what I, that's what I'm wondering. I don't know. I I think they might go for the uh, get somebody young or not get somebody young. Somebody who sounds young at times, like uh, well, not uh, Maxie Whitehead, but uh, who was the other one? I can't think of her name, but uh, anyways, uh, but who knows? Uh, they might try something it it entirely depends on who's doing the uh, uh directing sure. for it but i they might try somebody new for the role or something so who knows yeah, yeah. that wouldn't be that wouldn't be surprising because it does seem like I, mean, I tracked like the one piece dub announcements and they have been using a lot of the more their more recent talent mm-hmm. to do um the, the voice actor work because they actually Released a voice cast. Not the, uh, a while back, they released a voice cast for um, Film Z or Film Z. Some people might know it as, as well as the Thriller Bark arc of One Piece. And a lot of them were pretty much uh, people they've been using, like in more recent stuff, like the Fairy Tale movie and all that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if they try to do some like new talent. Yeah, yeah, they. You usually do some new talent in a lot of their uh, animes, that anime series is that they pick up. Like, uh, I think uh, the Devil is a part timer's dub has like uh, one voice actress who has done a lot of minor roles mm-hmm. in, in before, and uh, one who's basically brand new at like she hasn't really done any other roles I could see on anywhere. So. Uh, 
yeah, they do add a lot of new talent in uh, a lot of their dubs. Okay. Uh, anything else we want to talk about? No. Nah. Okay, moving on. Have you watched the uh, latest Sabajibu? Or yep, yep. Sabagabu? Uh, but, uh, it was a pretty funny episode. Uh, what I will say about the first half, like, well, it actually was the majority of the episode, is that with the student council president, yeah. is that it, it sort of teetered at first between being sort of like annoying and funny, but to see the student council president trying to... They are trying to sabotage a toddy. It sort of gradually got funnier, especially because um, she just wound up accidentally looking like she was like crushing on her instead. Yeah. And I think the one part that actually I laughed hard at in the show, it's more so um, just shows how little Momoka cares for anybody about yeah. besides herself sometimes, <laughs> is that she was like willingly to you know maintain friendship or you know you know friendship quotation marks with the, the student council president because she didn't know it was actually her. Yeah. That she was willing to just you know, completely forget about the gun, the uh, survival gun club, yeah, and gosh. it just shows that's it's what I love about Momoka's character. She is she doesn't really care about anybody else. She's just looking out for herself yeah. pretty much. So and then the second half, uh, Windows yeah, they, in the the they, Akusa uh, movie, could, yeah. It's like it ended and it ended in a way you could you would expect her yeah. just hitting her head on her whatever it was, oh, rock, rock or something. But it was pretty funny because, you know, uh, what's her name? Um, uh, the chick obsessed with... Urara? Or... Yeah, Urara. Yeah. She's like trying to betray Momoka, then Momoka just shoots her in the head anyway. Yeah. You can't betray Momoka. She'll shoot you before you betray her. <laughs> yeah. I love the uh, part when uh, the student council president was basically imitating the uh, old woman uh, uh, cafeteria lady and it's mm-hmm. <laughs> having found peace early <laughs> yeah. nirvana uh, and then Buddhism. we just gradually as she kept on hearing the rumors that were perpetuating or whatever yeah. it just <laughs> came back to her and just winds up being so embarrassed she has to skip school for the first time ever yeah yeah, and like I said, I, the you, like you said, uh, the yuk, yuk, yakuza part was I just ended wonderfully. Uh, I just I love this series so much because it's so freaking out there somewhat. Mm-hmm. But uh, it's got so many screenshot worthy moments and stuff. It's just do does so much wonderful random stuff. Just uh, and, uh, yeah, well, continue, continue, continue. And well, uh, now what were you going to say? Uh, you heard about the OVA, right? Uh, OV- I think I've heard about it. Yes. I think it's supposed to be coming out in September or October or something like that. Yeah. Whenever the first uh, Blu-ray releases. Yeah. So yeah. I'm, I'm wondering how that's because it's going to be because I think it's uh, it's supposed to be you know. I think it's supposed to be advertised as a beach episode, but I think in the description I read it said it's supposed to be like. Underwater survival training or something like that. <laughs> so I'm I'm looking forward to that. It's gonna be like a swimsuit episode or something. I don't know. It's sort of seen, it's probably gonna be that, but sort of turn it on its head and just include yeah. or that's, their imagination of what's going on. That's what I would expect from Sabagabu. That's what I'd expect. Okay. Uh, anything else you want to talk about about it? Uh, not really. I think the burning question is actually, uh, how was this week's Momokin sword? Uh, it had to do with idols. Uh, and, uh, oh god. This, yeah. Uh, poorly written. All those samurai guys being fanboys to the, uh, celestial maidens. Ugh. This is one badly written series, but I just want to continue watching it just to see how bad it gets. Say, how was the plot today, man? It was bad? No, the (laughs) plot. Oh. Uh, let's see. Uh, You were saying something about her posing nude or something like that? Uh Yeah. I saw saw on on my timeline... Yeah, uh, pictures you were posting in the show. 
Yeah. It's funny, uh, it's like, there's nothing but there's nothing but like cynical hatred shining through in those posts that you do. Yeah. It's like, it's like you don't get it from I guess that you know you don't get it from this show. You to like like speaking to you right now, it's like you're still enjoying it for how bad it is. You know, however little enjoyment it is. But anytime you post on Twitter, it's like. Why the hell am I even still watching the show? <laughs> exactly. It's so goddamn awful when I watch it, but then I kind of enjoy it for how awful and how bad the images, screenshot images I get from it are. And it's just... I just want to keep watching it just to see how bad it actually gets. Uh, as far as the plot for this week, it was like, the uh, Celestial Maiden chicks, uh, for some reason or another, became idols for a bunch of samurai dudes. And uh, Momo and her pets, or the Guardian 3, the monkey and the dog and the bird, mm-hmm. went off and uh, tried to get another peach fragment. Uh, eventually the idols... Uh, go back to helping her. And then uh, the, the uh, samurais want their money back because they didn't get their concert. So, uh, And, of course, this series does it a lot, but uh, Momo got all flustered and stuff while she was transformed, so uh, you got lots of fan service from that. And that's how she got uh, nudes sold. <laughs> It's so bad. Uh, you, can see, you can see this is all leading up to a Momokin Bakumatsu rock crossover. <laughs> I if that I, guy if that got to that point, Japan might as well just stop producing anime. Will nothing have, will just good or bad. Nothing will top that. No, nothing will ever top that ever. I gotta, I gotta ask though, how irrelevant is the plot in each episode? Pretty irrelevant. It's entirely for fan service, pretty much. I mean, last week's episode was actually kind of more tamer than the last couple of episodes. Or, not the, the episode I'm talking about now, the one before. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, Squid? A octopus? Uh, no, not that one. It was an episode after that, but uh, really wasn't that. Uh, out there or fans as fan servicey as the last couple of episodes. Mm. I mean, it was it wasn't good, but it wasn't exactly as bad. Uh, I don't know. But uh, God, I'm watching this series and I'm going to watch it to the end. Okay. I think that's enough talking about Momo Kyun Sword. Uh, I'm Gato. There was uh, cosplay, and the uh, president chick tells one of the camera guys that uh, he's a dude. The what's the main character guy who who's a trap, and uh, the uh, camera guy was completely okay with it. And that summarizes Himagote pretty much all together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anything else you guys want to talk about? No, not particularly. Lally Ho. Okay. <laughs> ah, yes. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Uh, oh, what... my goodness. This show is, like, so stupid yet so amazing. <laughs> yes. It's... I... To use a term uh, Tristan Dalliant used it for his review of uh, Guren Logan, it was stu effective. Stupid and effective. Oh my goodness, that baby is like the creepiest thing I've ever seen. It just keeps turning into like a little demon. Yes. It's just... Oh god, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't even know what to say about that episode. It's just... Beyond ridiculous. <laughs> All of JoJo's bizarre adventure is beyond ridiculous. And yeah, it's well, amazing. It's like it's yep. in a new plateau, though, through Stardust Crusaders. Yeah, and it's probably going to go higher from here. There's like 
Yeah, there's like five more chapters or like six, and who knows how uh, much higher it'll get. <laughs> oh my goodness! I really need to get back to that show. Yeah, where'd you stop off at? A couple months ago, I can't. It's because uh, I started taking on a lot more shows around that time. I think. I think that I, I can't remember, but uh, were you still in the Phantom Blood arc, or were you in Battle Tendency? I'm pretty sure I was still in Phantom Blood. Cause I think they were fighting. Uh, they're fighting those two knights. They're yeah. in England for some reason or other. I probably should just restart it if I yeah. do get back to watching it. But I have. I remember having a good idea of where I was because they had already met uh, Baron Seppoli. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I think I was on the episode, the first episode after they met him. Hmm, yeah. And when they were fighting the two, uh, I can't remember which historical figure it was. Uh, but, it's... um, yeah. Dio resurrected them pretty much to fight. Yeah. Uh, Jojo. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Phantom Blood was good, but I can't wait for you to get to Battle Tendency, because that's, I really love that arc. So much. It's sort of unfortunate, though, because a uh, case, a Crunchyroll mistranslating something happened again when I had watched it. The one episode where uh, he meets that girl again that he likes. Yeah. And um, uh, Speedwagon, you know, sees that you know they're talking. He like decides to leave instead of how it's supposed to be. Speedwagon withdraws coolly. <laughs> yeah. It's instead of Speedwagon withdraws for now. As, yeah. as generic as a translation as you could get. Yeah. <laughs> so I was just, like, disappointed because everyone... I remember um, Chris making a joke. He's like, what does REO Speedwagon do at the bank? He withdraws coolly. <laughs> and I was, like, yeah. so looking forward to seeing that line. And only to be disappointed. Yeah. By just a mistranslation. Yeah. Didn't he say time for Speedwagon to play it cool? Yeah, that was on my one, I think. And that's what it said for me, too. Uh, maybe they I don't know. retranslated I don't know what that it. About. I don't really get what that difference would be about, but... Mm. Anyways. Uh, anything else we want to talk about in simulcasts? I think that's all, I think it's all of them. Alright. Mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, other animes you guys been watching this week? I got back to back. Oh, nice. Okay. Uh, me, like I said before, I finally finished Seto Kai Yaikun Domo's OVAs. Or the season one OVAs. Still waiting you, for season two. Have you replenished your store of lewdness now? <laughs> I don't... <laughs> what? I <laughs> said, so have you replenished your um, yes. store of lewdness now? Yes, I have restocked it far more than I had before. Oh, God. So, How long did it take you to watch each episode? Because I... Uh, what was it, on Sunday that you are watching yeah. them? I saw you post so many pictures from the show. Yeah. I, and I was like, how how long did it take him to get through <laughs> the rest of the OVAs? I was basically... I took like a slight break at once, but and then I got back into it, and it was like almost an hour per episode, and I had like four or five episodes to get through. <laughs> so I was just plowing through... Plowing. Yeah. What'd you think? Uh, well, finish your joke. Go ahead. Plowing through them. To Ludio. Uh, <laughs> what did you think of the uh, Squid and Takatoshi? Yeah, that was probably one of my I got such a kick out of them. Cause the one especially with, um, I think it's Hagimura, how she just like faints and he's like, he's trying to like <laughs> wake her up. And I, I can't remember who walks in. It might be a sister or might be uh, Adia. But everyone just like misunderstands everything. Yeah. And then I, I, the one joke when I watched the OVA is the one joke I was waiting on and I actually sort of expected to be ruined for me because Stranger had posted the picture of it was um, uh, the uh, Echi switch? switch, the Echi switch. Yeah. I was dying and I was di- I was laughing so hard at that part because it's literally perfectly timed. I didn't even know it was going to be at that part, yeah. and then just hits and it's like the most perfect joke that show has produced. <laughs> or yeah. just, you know, manga, actually, since it's based on the manga. And speaking of which, I actually started that yeah. last night. Yeah, I should probably do that as well, eventually. 
Uh, it's just Soto Kayak Kundomo is so fantastic. I mean, it does have a lot of misses, yeah. but it just has really, like, so many jokes into it uh, each episode that really doesn't matter. Cause... Yeah, like, that's, that's sort of the, the general weakness with a lot of the four panel based yeah. shows. Like, I'll give, I'll give an example in, um, what's it called? Uh, Kill Me Baby, which I watched yeah. earlier this summer. It was fun, but it felt like a show that like was based off those. Like, it had, like you said, a lot of the skits would be hit or miss. Mm-hmm. And it's also the case with, uh, uh, I'm trying to remember. Mm-hmm. Nature Joe's a bit like that, too, because yeah. to an extent, it was also a four-panel it's a four panel comic as well but like I still fell in love with the absurdity of that show so I was able to forgive it yeah but it's, it's like you said with Sedekai Yakuin Domo that it packs so much into each episode most of the time that yeah, yeah, yeah. even in a moment of weakness it's fine <laughs> you can tell we're very lewd right now <laughs> oh, that show's just corrupted us all man yeah so, for for you people who don't know what we're talking about, Sedo Kaiyai Kundomo can basically be summed up as rapid-fire sex jokes. You should watch it. Yes, watch it. And so it really, it's nothing offensive. It's just, yeah. like you said, just people taking advantage yeah, one, one the of the opportunity to make a sex joke, essentially. Yeah, one of the reasons I really like it is even how sexualized the humor is, there's, there's like no fan, there's no, yeah. no fan service at all. No, that's actually not at no, all. there's nothing there's no nothing there at all. And really, unless everything you're sort is of, done for the joke, pretty much. Yeah, unless you're like a prude uh, when it comes to like any yeah. form of sex humor. You know, there's really nothing to be offended by, unlike say something like Prison School, because it actually has you know <laughs> quite a lot of fan service. Yeah. So, like I said, it's like. Anybody can watch the show and get a laugh out of it, in my opinion. It's unless you were just very sensitive to any form of sex humor. Yeah. Okay. Um. How about you, stranger? Have you been watching anything? I um. Like I said, I've watched um. Marathon of Dead Man Wonderland, and then I watched yeah. three different movies. Yeah, I, I still need to watch the first five episodes of Dead Man Wonderland. I kind of missed those when it was running on uh, Funimation or not Funimation. Uh, uh, Toonami. I was watching it while it was airing on Toonami, and I kind of got in while it was halfway through, so I kind of missed uh, the first half. Yeah, I imagine that was probably even more confusing than it already was. Yeah. Like, the thing that bothered me about that series is that it was very much a read the manga to find out more. Yeah, I I think the uh, manga artist, uh, or the manga Kai... She kind of had, like, a maternity leave for a while, so she postponed the manga. I don't know. I remember reading about that a while back on the, the wiki page, so I'm not sure if that's still true. Well, I can see it looked like it was finished on um, Wikipedia. Yeah. Hmm. But, yeah, like, there was no closure whatsoever. and like Yeah, no closure. Started, and then certain parts of the series were just a mess, like, the characterization was very much lopsided with people, so yeah, I end up like considering it like similar to the anime adaptation of Umineko. Like it's a fun watch, but it's really flawed. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Uh, uh, anything then else? I, oh, sorry. then I watched um, Perfect Blue, which was just a really really weird movie. Yeah. It's like, um, ends up with people questioning reality and mental illness and all that. Yeah. So it's a very trippy movie. Yeah. Uh, most of his movies are pretty trippy. Paprika! <laughs> yeah. yeah. Per- Perfect Blue is just now my introduction to Satoshi Khan, and I'm not sure if I like him or not. Yeah. I'd say definitely give Paprika a try. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's kind of. His movies are kind of pretty insane. And series, if you count Parent Hoya Agent. Uh, and then, um, 
I watched the Anna Hanna movie. Like, there's not much I can say other than it's a good epilogue. Mm. And then, of course, the Grave of the Fireflies. Ah, depression. Though that, like, the sadness of that movie has been, like, way played up after I've watched stuff like Anna Hanna and Clan Ed. Yeah, I've, I haven't watched it myself, so I, I'm only going off what I've heard. Yeah, like, it's kind of like a sad movie, but... It's not going to sit there and bring you tears or anything. Like, mm. At least it didn't for me. Mm. But for what it's worth, it's still like a really good movie about like the horrors of war and all that. Because mm-hmm. it's like these two kids that are stuck in like Japan during the final days of World War II. And they're struggling with like finding somewhere to eat and their house burned down. All kinds of stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for what it's worth, it's a really good movie. Uh, yeah, that's about it. All right. Uh, let's get on to the news, to- news and topics. Okay. So the uh, big thing this week is well, besides Funimation has finally given the re-release date for Cowboy Bebop for September. Uh, they also announced that they finally got the uh, rights to the uh, Steinsgate movie. But even more interesting is they announced that they have um. The Melancholy of Harui Shuzumiya, uh, both praise seasons. Haruhi. Yeah, praise Haruhi. Uh, both seasons uh, and the it's off shoots, and they also got Lucky Star and its OVA. Nothing so, on disappearance yet, but I imagine they will pick it up eventually. The one thing I'm confused about with Lucky Star, didn't they already have a dub? Yeah. It, it, the Wasn't Bond- that Funimation? I thought that was Funimation. No, it was Bondi. Bondi uh, went under like 2012, so a lot of their uh, series is are uh, out of. That's print. what I was wondering about because I remember actually checking out some of the dub while I was trying. I yeah. Tried and failed to watch it because I just didn't get some of the references. Yeah. They're talking about. Regardless, I saw that it had an English dub, and uh, when I checked out, so I was like, so when I saw the news of Funimation acquiring the rights to dub it, I was like, wait a minute, did they already dub it? No, that was like I said, Bundai. Yeah, I figured something was up. I just was a little confused initially. Yeah. So yeah, I mean it's not like I'm gonna watch it again. I was just merely curious. Yeah. Because I had been aware there was a dub. Is all. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's wonderful, but I really should have picked up the movie when I had the chance, like a couple of years ago. I was going to. But for some reason, I didn't. I mean, I really, really hope Funimation picks up Disappearance of Haruhi Shizumiya. Because uh, that movie was fantastic. Oh, and long. Goodness. And very long. It's like a three-hour movie, isn't it? Yeah, it's like the longest animated movie out there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I looked it up, and it is counted as the longest animated movie. And it is so worth it. It's like the culmination of everything that happened in the series. Yeah. Just take it up to like 11. It is yeah. so freaking good. And the animation in that movie was just fantastic. Yeah, Kyo and Andy brought their A-game for that. And yeah. You should know from seeing most of their stuff, their A-game is like any other anime studios like S-game or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, so that's animation for that's freaking awesome just like the snow and all that oh yeah. my goodness it's just so freaking fluid and stuff and it's just wonderful wonderful animation ah oh, yes okay um in other news Wagnaria season 3 confirmed yay yeah <laughs> we're all completely normal here <laughs> well actually I'm I was actually I was actually really happy to hear about because I was wondering, being that um yeah manga is apparently ending later this year, I was wondering if they were going to wind up getting another season yeah. to wrap up the show as well, and I actually really liked that. It's, yeah, it's one of those shows that like I won't I can't speak to where I place it in terms of, like overall shows, but it's got plenty enough characters where I would definitely rewatch it yeah. again. And just overall, you know, very good. I guess like. Show to chill too, I guess. Cause, yeah. It's uh, it's one of the few A1 pictures I genuinely like. Just 
the humor is so good, and all the characters are wonderful and weird. And of course, we have those uh, last episodes with Maya trying to be the normal chick in a abnormal <laughs> workplace. I yeah. always love those two last episodes. Yeah. Uh, one thing I always liked about that show, at least in its first season, because it calmed down in the second season, was um, Izumi, I think her name is. Her androphobia. Oh, yeah, the androphobia. And just also, uh, talk, oh, what's his name? I can't remember the main character's name. Yeah. Takanashi? Or... Yeah, Takanashi. something like that. Well, how he just loves little, like, small things, pretty much. Yeah, cute and small things and little kids. Yeah. And people just... I think, uh... I can't remember, I think one of the, the co-workers joked about him being a pedophile. <laughs> Yeah, there's or I think the one episode when uh, the one little girl got lost, that uh, lost her mom. He brought her in. It's like I found this adorable creature outside, and they said, "Okay, that's taking it to a dangerous <laughs> level, man." <laughs> yes. Yes. But, yeah. I'm glad. I'm happy that it's gonna get a yeah. season three. I, like I don't know when the hell it's gonna air. Yeah. I, I saw I'll... I saw something about like 2016. I don't think it would take that long, but or I'm not sure if it would take that long or not, but. Either way, I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, I also kind of hope uh, Servant X Service also gets another season. Yeah, that would be decent. I mean, I thought it ended up on a yeah. good enough note. It's almost as if they sort of had a feeling it wasn't going to get another um, season. season. Yeah. Like, that was also sort of... It was, I, would, I wouldn't say it was as funny as Wagnadia at any yeah. point, but it was, like, again, just... A good slice of life show just to chill to. Yeah. Plus it has... Uh, so, like I said, being that that ended as well, yeah. or is about to end, I can't remember when the news about it ending, yeah. the, the manga ending, I think it was beginning of the summer, if I'm not wrong. Mm. Being, it would be nice to if they just covered the rest of the chapters, Yeah. I suppose, just to see you know them be adapted. Yeah, that would be nice. Okay, um... Any other news you guys want to talk about? Two more days until Hannah Mono Guitar. Which is huh? like the... There's two more days until the premiere of Hannah Mono Guitar, which is the oh, newest... yeah. You're at thing the, in the uh, guitar... The se- latest season in the guitar... Or however you call it. Series. There's the Fame Monogatari series. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's, it's like a... um. Six episode OVA that was supposed to go into second season, but yeah, it is like by far the hypest series of the summer right now. Like, um, the anime subreddit did a poll, and like seventy percent of the subreddits gonna be watching it. Mm-hmm. So that's pretty good um, indicator of how popular it's gonna end up. Mm-hmm. Which I mean, after that last arc in Monogatari second season, I think it's gonna be really freaking good. I need to start. I need to get back to that series. Mm-hmm. Really bad, but like, I have like so many other things that I want to watch. First, I would like to get back out of the way. Uh, there's also the case I started would like to watch. Um, I don't really want to put them off anymore, but there's also Psychopaths I want to watch on, which actually just got added to Netflix, and I still need to watch uh, Madoka. On top of that, there's bunch of other shows that are on Crunchyroll that I want to watch, like, um... Well, I want to finish Space Brothers 1. I also want to watch, uh, Chihaya Furu. Yeah. Which, what, what's that show is that? Uh, Chihaya Furu. It's pretty much... It's hard to describe. I know it's... Um, my brother watched it, and he's recommended it to me quite a bit. And also, I simply also want to watch it because uh, this one song that's in it. It's uh, off the soundtrack. It's, like, really nice. But what it is, is, like, uh... It's, like, a school anime... But it's like uh, the characters in the show pretty much uh, do play like uh, cards competitively. It's like a card game, some kind of card game. And uh, I've been wanting to watch it because my brother actually said said it's probably one of his favorite series. And we generally like the same things, mm. so I probably love it. Like he recommended Space Brothers to me. That's why I watched it. And I liked what I watched that quite a lot. I just sort of fell off because I was watching other fell off with it because I was watching other things. But, uh, I also would like to add some of the other simulcasts if I can, but whether I will, I don't know. Yeah. Well, 
Plummy, I also, yeah. also need to watch. I also need to finish Spice and Wolf. Oh uh-huh, yeah. So I just put that off. Yeah. Well, I suppose since it doesn't really end on much uh, resolution, I mm-hmm. probably best. I'm part, part of the reason why I sort of stopped watching it at a point. Like I had a marathon like five episodes one night, and I remember talking to you about yeah. it. But what happened is that somebody had watched. Someone I guess had checked out the series through Netflix before I did, and they happened to leave it on the last episode of the second season. Ah. And it spoiled some of what had happened. And I was like, sort of disappointed by that. I was like, I would say it played a factor in why I stopped mm. watching it for a while. Or I haven't watched it in a couple. Yeah, that's fun. In, like uh, in like a month or so. Maybe a little more. But again, also, I'm also playing Radiant Story on the <laughs> DS every other night. So yeah. once I get back, to, once I finish that, when I, when I will, I don't know. Because it's actually been longer, a lot longer it's taking me a lot longer to finish it than I had anticipated it would. Mm. But whenever I finish Radiant Astoria, maybe even before that, maybe it could be just once I finish Beck, I plan to get finish um, Spice and Wolf season two. Mm. And I, you were saying that doesn't really end on like you know any yeah. like major thing. I, that's sort of that's easy to guess, I suppose, because I've seen so many people want a season three of the show. Yeah. Then I want to blame them based off based simply off the first season and like the half of the season of season two that I watched. It is just it's act, I don't know what it is about. It's like one of those things. It's like one of those shows that just sort of grabs you. Yeah, and I think it has to I'll, do with like the set like the setting is that is established really well, especially with like the economic aspect. And Holo and uh, Lawrence are just you know entertained an entertaining duo. Yeah, as leads. And the music in it is just wonderful. Yeah. Just really captures the feeling of the setting. Yeah. Like I said too, I really would not mind an RPGs. Yeah. Similar to similar in tone at least to Spice and Wolf because it just has this like really addicting feeling, I guess, or alluring or whatever yeah. is the right word. Absorbing, I guess. Yeah. Okay, um, well, on that note, let's go over to our recommendations. Um, first off, games and v- or VNs we recommend. Uh, how about you, Alex? I'll recommend System Shock 2, because uh, even though it's like we talked about last week, um, that it's dated, the more I've been playing it recently, I guess up until the point I'm at now, because I'm getting towards the end, it's actually starting to get hard again. It really, once you start getting more of a control over the game, it's sort of like Bioshock in that it just sort of compels you to play it. The story... Like, well, through, it's uh, uh, like the predecessor to Bioshock. Yeah, I know. It's uh, it's actually what they made before. Yeah. Uh, they made Bioshock, I believe, or at least what Ken Levine worked on for Bioshock. And it's sort of like Bioshock in that once... The uh, through like the um the recordings that you could listen to with the people on the ship, the Rickenbacker and the um what's it called? Uh, I'm trying to remember what the main ship is called. I can't remember. But uh, you uh, listen. It helps it continually like it's really well establishes really well like what's going on, and w- once you actually like start getting like you know more of a control of what's going on. It really becomes a like, very good game. Like, I'm not gonna lie, you, how dated it feels might put you off, but once you sort of get comfortable with it, you know, it's, it's it takes off pretty much. At least, yeah. at least, that's how it was for me. And I speak with having an idea of actually what to do in the game now, because first, like, one or two playthroughs, I was like, what the hell am I even doing? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, like I said, it's. Got better after I started getting more comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, how about you, Stranger? Like, what do I recommend? Yeah. Paper Mario. <laughs> like, I've found out that a lot of people haven't played that game, and, mm. like, it is just a fantastic action RPG, and it's got, like, a lot of great humor in it. Yeah. Like, it's, it's like, one of the most overlooked games in the Nintendo 64 library, I'd say. Play that, I played that when I was a kid. I love that game. Yeah, I never had a 
much many uh, Nintendo consoles outside of my uh, Game Boy Advance and my 3DS. So I, I did play, like, uh, friends' houses, but, yeah, I missed a lot of games from uh, Nintendo's uh, uh, library and stuff. Yeah, it's worth yeah, it to that's... catch up now, like, especially with the virtual console on Wii and Wii U and yeah. all that. Well, that's, inf- that's where it sucks. Actually, when I still had the Wii, because um, I wanted trading it in at some point, I think last year, uh, one of the games they have on those, um, the deal, the Club Nintendo things, was Paper Mario, and I really badly wanted to get it, but I just didn't have enough points at the time. But I really, it's a game I wouldn't mind playing again. Mm. Yeah. I, grew, I actually, that's one of the games I played when I grew up, and I have fond memories of playing it. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, all three of the Paper Mario games are good. Sticker Star doesn't exist. <laughs> oh my goodness, I hate that game so freaking much. Yeah, I've, I've heard a lot of hate for it. Like my main problem with it is that the battles in there are utterly pointless. Like, you use stickers in the battle to win the battle and get stickers. So, like, you might as well just try and avoid all the battles and just skip past to the boss. Then once you get to that boss, there's just, like, a huge difficulty spike. <laughs> it's just terrible. Yeah. I would, I, I would still like to try the game. Oh, my goodness. You don't know what you're going to put yourself like a, through? I mean, I never... I That's sort of the thing. I never... Besides the first Paper Mario, I don't have much experience with the rest of the series. My sister played The Thousand Year Door, but I never got around to it. And she also played the... um, What's it called? On the Wii? Super the Wii Paper Mario? Yeah. I wanted to play that. I think I might even start it, actually, but I don't think I got very far. So I... Like, I would go in with not really having much experience... Having experience with the rest of the series... So, but the way you seem to hate the game is the way I seem to hate um, Dream Drop Distance from in the Kingdom Hearts series. Yeah, that you want to blog about that, don't you? Yeah. Uh, what's What's funny about the, uh, what I wrote is that what it was is pretty much, you know, I'm a Cage fan. I've been playing that series long enough to get sort of frustrated with the, um, or just outright frustrated sometimes. At this point, at least with the faults of the series. And it's what I wrote is actually what I've been wanting to write for a long time now, especially since, you know, how awful Dream Drop Distance was. And the funny thing about it is that the rest of it is sort of like, you know, paragraphs, maybe slightly longer paragraphs. I pretty much devoted... The section, the amount of space I devoted to Dream Drop Distance, like, disca- describing why I don't like the game, could have been its own thing, essentially. <laughs> And if you haven't like seen out if or if you haven't seen how big the section is, I would suggest you check it out. I'm not even saying to read it. It's like it's literally the rest of the blog, then the dream dot uh, dream drop distance section. <laughs> and maybe I'll, maybe I'll just even I'm not sure how much you fall like any of you have followed the story, but and I know I, I know I've you only uh, played the f- first two games. All right, I've well, played yeah, any I pl- offshoots. I played the first game. I hated it. So, um... Yeah, yeah. I, remember, I remember reading that. I remember reading that what you wrote about I, it. I like the games all right, but I wasn't a huge fan of them. Uh, do you mind if I spoil something? Are you ever going to go back to the series? Mm. Probably yeah. not. All right. Well, if uh, the one thing that pissed me off essentially, or I actually put three things that pissed me off in what I what I wrote is essentially clones. Uh, hold on, clones. Uh, I can't remember what the next thing is. Uh, well, clones is one of the things that happens. You said and, like clones uh, four times. Well, it's because I was trying to remember what it was. Uh, let me check really quick, actually. <laughs> uh, you guys discuss something else really quick while I check. Okay. Um, while well, he's checking out that stuff, for um, uh, what were we talking about again? Kingdom Hearts. Clones. Oh clones, yeah, clones. 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 Well, I guess I'll move on to my v- game I recommend, and it is Warframe. It's a free-to-play PC and PS4 cooperative third-person shooter where you basically play as badass cyborg space ninjas fighting against uh, armies of clones. Gotcha. Oh, no. <laughs> Evil no. merchants and space zombies. Um, all right, shoot- all right. Well, I'll continue if you want to uh, finish the, up, finish up, and I'll get back to it. 
Uh, the shooting and melee mechanics are really, really fun and tightly tight and stuff. And the game itself is extremely well optimized. It it looks go- really good on even lower end machines. Uh, uh, it also has all sorts of sub games like a sort of a collectible card game that uh, really mo- that with the uh, mods where you can basically make your weapons more powerful and do different stuff the more cards you collect and add on to them. Uh, it can be glitchy at times, but the glitches are usually very minor and never really game-breaking. They do a good job of hitting out the uh, bigger bugs before the minor ones. Uh the game is really ridiculously fun with friends. Like I, I just joined my friend's clan, who, which he just made, and I haven't actually seen the dojo they're in. But it's it's really fun to play with uh, friends and stuff. Uh, I play on as well my standard username, but uh, you can add me if you want. Uh, anybody listening? Okay. Uh, what were you talking about, Alex? All right, I was talking about Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance and what the story especially did to piss me off. Like I said, the three main things, especially at the end of the game, that essentially cemented why I hate the game is, and pretty much serves to show how bad the story has come to be, is clones, time travel, and pretty much a cliched uh, plot uh, plot device. And what happens... Um, you having played Kingdom Hearts 2, you know about Xehanort, right? Uh, stranger? I don't oh, know, I was, I was talking to you, I was talking oh, to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know about Xehanort. Well, what happens pretty much is that essentially everything that has happened in the series has been planned since the very beginning. And me having played the game since... Two, that, me having played the games, me having played the series since 2003, that really cheapened the story for me. Despite how stupid it got, it's like it's like it's telling when a series gets to a point that you essentially have to use such a cliched and cheap plot device as I had this plan all from the start. And yeah. I, like I found out about that because I had actually quit the game and wound up just like re- you know watching the ending. Yeah, I, yeah. I found out about that as like just experiencing the most disgust I've felt with the series. While still trying to be like reasonable, I was like, I for, mo- for for I would say for like a month, I just hated the Kingdom Hearts series. After that, before eventually calming down, it was like, and like I said, the whole clones thing is that the whole the, the whole uh, plan thing is part of the time travel thing as well. Because he Zaynor essentially told essentially told a younger version of himself what would happen in the future, and they planned accordingly, which allowed them to use that plan to pretty much. Use Organization 13, which is you know one of the primary villains in the second game. This, this pretty much the game reveals their ultimate purpose in being pretty much vessels of Xehanort or pretty much clones of Xehanort. And one of the things that Sora says is uh, like he's pretty much complaining to one member named uh, Exegbar that you know it's like you're pretty much like giving yourself up or something like that. It's like aren't you against that? And this is pretty much such a bad line and one of the reasons is like, I just yeah. he responds I'm already half Zayn or <laughs> and I just I think I saw that and I just sort of sat there I was like are you kidding me and I was like, are you? I was like I'm... as you can tell I, I, I can't even like put together thought on it sometimes <laughs> it's like so mind numbingly stupid and this is a series that's had multiple stupid moments Ever since the second game, even in the first one, he had a couple. Yeah. But it's like to say something like that. It's like unforgivably stupid, in my opinion. <laughs> and it's like I said, I, I'm at a point where I'm just more so tolerating the series. Yeah. But and like you know, I was excited when the Kingdom Hearts three was revealed last year, but the fact is, it's not going to come for a couple another couple years. And really, I'm probably going to be off the wagon for with the series. After that game, I'm not unless they do something really interesting with the series after that. Probably not. I'm done. I'm done with Kingdom Hearts. It'll be the next Duke Nukem Forever. 
<laughs> That's actually Final Fantasy 15 more than likely. <laughs> yeah. Which yeah. is which when the telling thing about that is like people still make a joke out of that game and it sort of deserves it. it's like you revealed it in 2006 and they only started working on it in 2011 for Christ's sake yeah. and it's like I'm, I'm it actually seems like they're wor- they might be working on them side to side but I remember the one interview on Game Informer sort of painted it like Nomura's team was working on Kingdom Hearts 3 first and more power to them because I'd rather have that sooner but at the same time it's like you know it's probably going to be over 10 years by the time since it was revealed by the time Final Fantasy 15 comes out yeah. Well, uh, anything else you guys want to talk about in uh, uh, games? Yeah. I bought a Wii U. I can play Nintendo at HD now. <laughs> I feel nice. so futuristic. Yeah. I'm but yeah. Um, yeah. I got... After my P- after I buy a PS3, I'm still debating if I should get a Wii U or some more upgrade my PC. I. Want to get a Wii U? But I'm, n- I'm still in a rush to get it. Yeah, because right now the only thing I really, really want most for of the it games is I, most, most of the games I want. Yeah, most of the games I want for the system. While there are some that I still want to play, like you know, the Wonderful 101 or um, yeah. Smash Brothers, as well as um, a couple of the other games that came out this year and last year. Most of the games, like uh, Xenoblade Chronicles X, Splatoon, uh, more than likely Yarn Yoshi as well, those are all coming out in 2015. So there's really no rush unless you know. I just think sp- spur of the moment I decide I want a Wii U. <laughs> yeah. I'm not in a, I'm not in any rush to get a Wii U still. Yeah, so. I pretty much. But I will admit, I will admit, like out of all the consoles out right now, I have there's more that I want to play on that system than the PS4 and the Xbox One combined. Yeah, well, I ca- I'm going with the PS4 first because I kind of missed out on the PS3. So mm-hmm. I kind of wanted to get the games that are also coming out for the uh, that are getting converted over to a PS4 because mm-hmm. I missed out on a lot. I, yeah. So uh, oh, yeah, I the, believe uh, Stranger was talking about the Wii U. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The um, thing that made me take the plunge for it was because of that Mario Kart promotion. So. All we had to pay for is Mario Kart 8, me and my brother did. And we also got Wind Waker HD for free. Hmm. One of my friends, uh, Matt, he gave me a free code from that for Pikmin 3. Hmm. And then New Super Mario Bros. U and Super Luigi U were packing games, so I got like five games already. Nice. And I only paid for one. <laughs> well, at, least nice. to, at, least have, at least you have something to make it worth the price for yeah. some time. Yeah, like so far, it's pretty fun system. Yeah, I think DJ pretty much yeah. liked that a lot, the Wii U a lot. Yeah, well, I was gonna say the one the surprising thing that any time I've gone to like one of the kiosks in like GameStop, the one surprising thing is how comfortable the gamepad is. Mm. Yeah, I think that's something also DJ mentioned to me. Uh, the like, what do you think about really it, Stranger? Nice. I mean, it's. Fairly comfortable to hold if you're looking at a TV, but I won't deny that it's kind of awkward on your neck if you're looking down at the gamepad screen while you're playing it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because, like, imagine just, like, trying to stare at the controller the entire time you're playing. Yeah. Yes. But still, for what it's worth, it is um pretty innovative and fun controller. Yeah. Like, plus, there's the whole thing of being able to stream the Wii U over to the tablet and use that as your TV screen so I was playing yeah. Mario Kart without turning the screen on or turning the TV on hmm. that was yeah. a pretty interesting thing to be able to do Yeah, it, it the, sounds nice being able to do that and like if somebody else needs to use the TV you can just unhook it and play it somewhere else although I did try and take it from the living room to my room and it does not have that range yeah yeah I can see that. Yeah, it's a pretty good console. Wish they started releasing more virtual console games, though. Yeah. Like, so far, all they got ported over is NES, Super NES, and Game Boy Advance. Which, I no, mean, it's... like... What was that? Uh, they definitely need to get some uh, GameCube and Wii U... Or, Wii games ported over eventually. One of the things yeah. that confused me, didn't, aren't they also bringing over DS games? Yep. 
I was confused why they just don't do that for the 3DS instead. Uh, I don't know. Nintendo's been really weird with their get with their um, virtual console releases. They just trickle them out and they they do do release some DS games because I found a couple on the uh, store for the 3DS, my 3DS. Mm-hmm. But that's more so. That's more so. Uh, what was it? Whatever their storeware was called. Yeah. Now oh, they're like in little like indie market. Yeah. They, yeah, they got indie games up there, but. Say something like uh, "The World Ends with You." You couldn't really find that on the store itself, mm. or other big games from the DS and stuff. You actually had to have to find the uh, original DS copies. And those do not come cheap anymore. Nope. For a lot of Dep- games. It depends what you're looking for, because I've yeah. actually been I've added a bunch of games um, to my uh, Amazon wish list, and because I ha- I would love it. One of the regret I have with the DS is sometimes like it had a, a lot of games available. But the thing is, sometimes I can never make up my mind what I wanted. Yeah. So there's you know there was a lot I wanted to play. I just never knew what to pick, and so I'm trying to go back to play as many games. That's why I bought Radiant Historia and um, 999. One of the games I actually have on my wish list is one that actually never came over here, called Soma Bringers from the people who made Xenoblade. I also have uh, and that. As of now, last time I checked, it's either ten or twenty dollars. Hmm. And apparently, if you, I guess, I also plan to get a, another DS Lite. Apparently, you could patch it. There's a patch out there that you could, um, I guess, you know, jailbreak the DS to use. That could patch it in English. So I plan on getting that. But I also have um, Kingdom Hearts Recoded on there, and a couple other games like um, the one game that Will's mentioned, Hotel Dusk. Yeah. I'd also like to get Medios again because I had that a couple years ago and I loved it. Hey, you just reminded me a minute ago. Do you think they'll have a re release of Xenoblade for Wii U whenever the next title comes out? I don't know. I mean, I'm pretty sure you could play it now. I'm pretty sure it's, back, uh, it's available to play. That's yeah, backwards and, uh, compatible, but that game's still freaking expensive right now. I mean, I it, would it, would make, yeah, it would make sense. It would make sense. It would make sense to. Uh, I think it would make sense as to whether Nintendo would actually listen to sense is another thing. But I think it would make sense if they re-released it. I just don't think they would. Hmm. So, I mean, it really depends on what you want to play. It Like, I personally were, I've seen, you know, you've seen, like, Will, like, praise the story and everything. I personally, and I was actually talking about it with my brother earlier, I valued more the setting of the game and the battle system of the game. I thought both of those were excellent. It also has probably the best soundtrack, I think, in a game since Chrono Cross. So, like I said, it, it honestly, like, dep- it depends who I guess I would recommend it to. I would say it's worth paying a lot for. I, I, then again, I had the privilege of being able to buy it when it first came out. So, yeah. Well, uh, on that mode, note, we should probably move on to anime we recommend. So uh, I'll start us off with my recommendation of Setokai Yaikun Domo. Uh, as we mentioned before, it is basically rapid-fire sex jokes, but there's basically li- very little to next to nothing in way of fan service or anything. And it's just all humor. And it's just... If if you're not hot... Uh, blah. If if you're a pr- kind of a prudish to a sexual humor, it might not be your uh, series, but it can just get a laugh from basically anyone who watches it. Otherwise, uh, how about you, Alex? What do you recommend? Uh, being that I finished in, actually forgot to mention it at the beginning of the show. <laughs> Cromarty High School. Uh, if you're, it is again like another absurd comedy, but. Honestly, uh, if you have an appreciation for stuff like uh, you made this comparison, stranger, sort of like Adult Swim type of humor, only maybe sort of more dumb and weirder at times, you will like that show. And uh, like I said, I I probably consider it one of the best comedy series I've watched. So uh, that's my recommendation. Okay. Uh, what about you, stranger? I'm gonna recommend Anohana because I watched the movie of it. Mm-hmm. It's like a series that. I'm not going to say that the characterization is perfect, but it is still really good. And, like, all the drama, like, all the laughs and tears you get um, through it just 
all builds up to that last episode, and it is designed to make you cry. Hmm. Like, it is, like, right up there with the second half of Clan Ad After Story. Hmm. It is, like, a really good um, emotional anime. <laughs> and it's only 11 episodes long, so you're not going to have to sink too much time into it. Yeah, that's always nice. Um, well, if we have nothing else to talk about, uh, I guess we'll go on to our outro. So, uh, hopefully you all enjoyed this week's episode of Divergence Cast. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter and my anime list if you'd like, uh, as both, as both should be in the description or blog post, depending on if you're listening through the, uh, YouTube video or our GIO blog post um, if I'd like to thank everyone who sent in s- suggestions and stuff um, as far as uh, the mono is concerned uh, I will try to look it up with my uh, software but uh, I'm still very new to this stuff so uh, I'm not really going to guarantee anything just yet um, I'll definitely get the uh, annotations in for, at the very least, the uh, simulcast section, because I definitely need to do that. Um, and of course, I'll definitely shorten the uh, the uh, intro. That was uh, a goof on my part. But um, outside of that, uh, until next time, praise Haruhu, Haruhi and El Congru. Peace. Allie-ho.